alcohol abuse and uh, violence in the family and then uh, come to normalize that type of living. So it was like a normal standard. So uh, as it grew up, more violence came, you know, I became a bully, more of a bully towards uh, others at school. Um, drugs was definitely uh, uh, involved there. Uh, meth uh, um, was probably my, was my go-to. Yeah, we were technically youth offenders. Steve took his experience, went one way, one direction, I went another way. As Steve said it is, he was, he was acting out, bullying, stealing, and doing that, sneaking out at night. I was just sitting at the house. I was afraid that, you know, that um, because of the things that happened in the house, I was always the go-to of the punishment. I was the always being looked at, the one to be yelled at, thrown stuff at, to be degraded, humiliated. So I didn't want that anymore, you know? So I would do everything I can to avoid situations. So I tried to stay hiding all the time. And my understanding of things at uh, my first prison, I was told that you have life without, that you're gonna spend the rest of your life in prison and don't worry about such things as 115s or, um, or ever getting out. You know, I was hurting inside, but I really didn't know how to express it either. But drugs seemed to make it easier for me to be able to talk and communicate. I've always wanted friends. I always wanted things. I always wanted to uh, build a car, a house, have a girlfriend, uh, have a decent life. But I did not know how to do these things because I was always worried about the house, about the home life, about the getting uh, in trouble again for something I didn't do. But there came a point where we're watching other people, you know, leave uh, the prison, uh, tra transfers, uh, getting out and, it's, you know, paroling. And it's like, we're still staying here, you know. Maybe there's something else for us that we can do to, you know, Maybe the life without doesn't mean life without. I think secretly we did want something else, okay? Um, but we just really did not know what it was. In level fours, there's not a lot of rehabilitation going on there, right? Uh, um, still with the addiction, still with the criminality. Uh, we just, we didn't really know where to turn to. Sick and tired of being sick and tired? That's how I felt. I'm looking in the mirror one morning I'm shaving, my brother's sitting on the bed in the cell, and, and I'm thinking, wow, you know, I'm so tired. I'm so tired of, you know, just not happy. I'm not happy with anything. Um, I don't like myself. I don't like anybody else around me. So I don't know what else to do. But I do know I have somebody I love sitting right over there beside me and I think that it's time for me to start setting a better example. I felt that I brought us here to the prison. You know, it was my fault that he's even in prison because he followed me. I need to, if I brought him in prison, I need to help get us out of prison. I think it was in 2013, we got the gift of, they said they were gonna be sent to a level three. So we came over here to the, our first level three was a yard. And at Solano. It, yes, and they had some programs here. So I started just doing something I never did before, going through different programs that they had on the yard. And so um, after going through them, it made me start feeling better about myself. I started talking about my stuff. I started opening up because I was very, very quiet, you know, before. I never really talked about it, nothing. I didn't want to say anything, right? So I, but today I talk about everything that you know, that the, I need to talk about relatability, you know, to get, it is that get my stuff out so I can see what it looks like and other people can see it too and call me out on it if it's wrong or right. I've been doing these kinds of programs, Steve. Steve's been more active in it than I was, took more of a leadership role in it. And I watched him while he was doing, as I was participating in groups, Steve was like, facilitating and stuff like that. I'm still, I was still scared at that time to do such things like that. I was very nervous, like who the hell am I tell anybody else to stop using drugs? Those are things that I, it was inside of me. It's like, I just wanted to do me. But the next thing I know, started facilitating groups and coordinating groups, training people. And we even created a program that we believed after all of our understanding 
that, that we can give back to our community that we believe in. We had an idea, you know, uh, uh, that we've been pondering already, even during uh, uh, the youth offender uh, program that we was a part of um, as mentors, that if we can create, bring the curriculum like uh, anger, uh, goal setting, self-esteem building, family values, if we can bring these with arts and crafts and combine them, you know, this would be a, you know, another way that we can bring new faces to the programs. It's based on low self-esteem, uh, family values, and goal setting, right? So when we're talking about painting or crocheting, this is what it is about this program, is that I believe that most people in prison, if they're anything like me, have the same kind of stuff, then they, they don't believe they can do such a thing, paint or draw or whatever. I tell them all at the beginning is that you don't even need to know how to draw to come into my class. You will, you will complete two paintings by the end of 12 weeks. They will be beautiful. You will paint just like Bob Ross. They will be com completed. You've just aligned yourself with the right people. See, we didn't have the right people when we were growing up. So I'm letting them know right now, Steve and me are there. You've just aligned yourself with the right people. If this is your goal, we will help you complete it. And again, we'll send one of them to charity, ask nothing in return. They will get a certificate from that charitable organization saying, what a wonderful, nice thing that they did. Thank you very much. Uh, and then you'll send the other one to a family member or loved one just to make sure to say, I love you. Uh, thank you very much for being there. This is what this whole program was built up on because we didn't think much about family values. We didn't know anything about goals and we had very, very low self-esteem. That's why we built this. But we took all the other stuff like AA, anger management, relapse. We talk about this when we're painting. We talk about obstacles that may get in our way. Some of them are outside of us, some of them are inside of us. But some of them we can control, some of them we can't. But we're gonna talk about that, about peer pressure and acceptance. And what we do is we hold our classes on the outside. We're out in the dorm. So where, where, where everybody, or in the day room, where everybody can come around, all the friends, all the homeboys can come and say, either you suck or you're good or, or keep it up. We want all those nice comments because it's relatable to the homework and this stuff that we talk to them about. This is the stuff that you may not thought about could get in your way. Peer pressure and acceptance is a biggie in prison. It's uh, Clark. Creatively learning arts raises knowledge. And, uh, and that's exactly what it's doing. We're bringing this cognitive behavior therapies into the art. So, you know, and it's beautiful. Uh, he happens to, you know, really excel at painting. I'm a, I'm a crafter. Well, I can paint, but I prefer crafting. He can craft, but he prefers painting. So, mm -hmm. but we wrote it in a way that, you know, that CDC, uh, this is our gift, you know, that CDC can use it in any capacity. Um, um, we ourselves will, you know, use it to whatever capacity, but it can, it can go to whatever other arts and craft, jewelry beading or, uh, you know, um, uh, origami, whatever the person wants to do, whatever facilitator wants to do. But that facilitator is expected to be giving back, you know, so, because that's the biggest part, you know, we're not asking, um, the Department of Corrections to uh, pay for anything other than just give us a spot to run the program. We thought, we got together and we said, well, here's a curriculum of anger management. All you see is anger management on the front or denial or whatever, right? But we wanted to sell this program in our way, put our personal touch to us. So um, we came up with the idea of just drawing caricatures of me and Steve. And so making fun of ourselves because we can laugh at ourselves now. We laugh at all the time. So we drew these things. 
right? And, um, and so now when people read this, the first thing they do is they look at this picture first and they said, okay, I see you guys. I see you, I said, I think it's, you know, okay, I, you guys can laugh at it. And so it makes it easier to read when you start coming into the, to the material. I've gone through a lot of stuff to get to where I am today. I can make it easier for myself if I was telling myself at the age of 20, 25, to set myself on a path, believe in yourself, you know? Mm -hmm. You can do things that, you know, you don't have to give in to peer pressure. You don't have to, you know, uh, um, just because, um, just because um, you just want to fit in, wait, watch, watch, you know, give it a minute. You don't have to just fit into the first thing that, you know, um, uh, that's there, that there's, there's all kinds of people around you that you may not be seeing that um, is um, people that's, that loves you, you know. I ran into a lot of things where I would tell him that a lot of the people I associated with were, um, they didn't really care about me, just being used, but that's the process, you know. You, be, you get used in here. So um, knowing that you have good people around you, that's why the, the workshop is because just tell them that there is people out there who love you and care you, support you, no matter through thick and thin. Believe in yourself. Don't give up on hope. Don't give up on hope because you don't know what tomorrow will bring. You know, so change does happen, even though you don't think it does. It does happen. You know, we've seen it. We have evidence of it. And uh, I, that's what I would say. Don't give up on hope. Don't give up on yourself.